Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, filling in for Alex. Alex is in London, confronting Big Brother, going places the mainstream media will not go. And we have, uh, there's a six hour difference between the time here in uh, Austin and the time in London. So he's been out at Bilderberg today, bullhorning and speaking and uh, doing quite a bit of work earlier. And we've got a video that was uploaded live from there that we're going to cut to in just a second. Alex is on his way back to the hotel where he's going to come in and start doing the show in just a few minutes. Let's go to that cut right now. Mainly the media moguls and, and people like Peter Field are openly debating on the real agenda this year, going public and having real transparency. And so I tell you now, it's time for you to speak to the press and it's time for you to be honest about the things you've done before more of you get indicted like you did back in the 70s with the Lockheed Martin scandal. Yeah. So know this, we're aware of your lobbying, yeah. we're aware of you behind the closed doors, trying to get your fingers into the government uh, stream of money, and we are here to point out that this is going on, and it's outrageous that many of you are worth 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars in attend this, and that you would make the taxpayers fit most of the bill for the iron fence that you've demanded that be built around uh, the compound no, that you're meeting in. It is disgusting and it's nothing but a uh, exclamation point uh, illustrating how we pay for your whole life and your whole world and most of you are a bunch of stinking parasites <laughs> freedom for my children in the future and yeah. living there are not claims to merge the North American Union that Bush signed back in 2005 in secret, but that got leaked with the European Union. Those transatlantic deals are already being made. We know that's their plan to remove uh, local control from the uh, county, uh, city, state, federal level. I want my U.S. government back. I don't want my representatives being puppets bought off in the dark behind steel fences. I want the criminal lobbying to stop now, and I want a future for my children. And what's your personal ambition? What would you like to be doing in five years' time or ten years' time? In five years' time, I would like to be basically off the air. And I'd like to be oh, no. Uh, no, I'd like to be a, 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 a farmer on our family farm. Oh, right. That's, That's what I would like to do. And I would like to see the globalists fall like the old Soviet Union. I'd like to see most of them after a trial, obviously, be sent to prison uh, for the crimes against humanity that they've committed. And uh, I would like to uh, basically hand over the reins of my media operation to some of my crew to continue to muckrake. Uh, but but if we weren't in such dire straits, I would not be broadcasting. Seven well, we're going to continue with that. We've got Alex coming up in just a few minutes. Hey, uh, David, thanks for being there. We're going to come back after the break with uh, Max Kaiser here uh, in our little makeshift studio uh, from Wadford, north of London. Thanks a lot. Ride shotgun there for us in case we have any technical difficulties. And if you'd like people to see the entry you talked about, have the crew post it in the featured news section uh, so people can see it at Infowars.com. That is a really great idea. Thank you very much, David Knight. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a lot of other news other than Bilderberg that I really want to get to. Uh, there is a huge amount of awakening now inside the United States dealing with the issue of illegal spying. Here are just some of the headlines today. Obama administration collecting phone records of millions of Americans daily. Secret court order requires Verizon to hand over all call data. White House defends critical tool against terrorist threats when they run al-Qaeda now publicly. We've gone from that being a theory to absolute admitted fact, but still, they take all our rights because of their terrorists. Specifically target Americans, not foreigners, all completely illegal. Homeland Security laptops, phones can be searched based on hunches. NSA sees all phone, sex, banks, and emails. Of course they do. Uh, NSA agents have gone public about how much they enjoy listening to you and your wife have sex, everything. And then they go on here, FBI wants a backdoor to all software, that already goes on. CIA will spy on you through your dishwasher, 1984, published 64 years ago today. That's the smart way DrudgeReport.com takes all the latest breaking news and then puts it together with 1984 has now arrived 60 plus years later, 64 years ago today. And I'm in the country, Airstrip 1 of 1984. 
That's a story. That's a report. That's information. Today, 1984, 64 years after it was published in 1948, and we have gone beyond it. But, but we got to have two worlds and a paradox here. This great tyranny that's beyond 1984, but still people think they're free, think there's free press, think they have a right, so they really are free. But you have this corrupt world trying to absorb everything, and it's taken over the banking, it's taking over the media, it's using government regulators to shut down their competition. It is truly unprecedented. So. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not gonna spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active, organize, take action, go viral, create, contribute, resist, because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com All right, folks, I, I am here with Max Kaiser live in studio. I do intend to take some of your calls in the next hour, so crew, make me do it, because I want to hear from people specifically that are in the UK, the hundreds of people that were already out there today. And I predicted just hundreds of the first day, probably uh, 1,000 the next day, and then maybe 2,000 on Saturday when everybody can get up here. And, and there is parking. Well, I don't want to get into logistics. We do an article on logistics for people for Infowars.com forward slash Bilderberg. Now, Max Kaiser was a very successful uh, stockbroker on Wall Street uh, before he retired at an early age, the inventor of the, new, of the Hollywood Stock Exchange virtual trading system um, used by Counter and Fitzgerald that's now used on many trading markets around the world. You know who he is. He doesn't need to be introduced. And he's at TV shows on BBC, Al Jazeera, RT right now, Press TV. You name it, he's got it. And I wanted to get his take on Bilderberg 2013, so he's here. But I got to say this, Max Kaiser kept saying, you got to come to Europe, you got to come to England. I'd been here like seven years ago, and been here before that. And I'd, maybe every 50th person I would cross down the street uh, you know, would say, hey, Alex Jones. This, I got mobbed, a third of the people on the train, uh, just, just walking down the street, people hear my voice. We have more listeners in England of every race, color, and creed religion than we have... Uh, in the United States, in Austin, Texas, my main command center. Max, yeah. it's great to have you here. I don't want to talk about myself here, but you brought this uh, up today. But, 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 but I mean, what does this mean? Not about Alex Jones, that, that alternative media is that popular because everybody knows you too. Well, as I've been saying when I've been on your show before, is that when I travel around Europe, people ask me about Alex Jones. And I think it's because English is the universal language around the world and people are hungry for alternative media and they gravitate toward Alex Jones. So, yeah, you're well known all over Europe, everywhere I've gone, even when I was in Cairo. People in the Tahir Square would say, we listen to Alex Jones. So here you are in Bilderberg, here you are in Watford. And I personally have had a bit of a learning curve because, you know, my, my feeling about Bilderberg over the years has been that it, do I really, really care about Bilderberg? But I think this year is a watershed year where now they've got their media kit, they're on the media offensive, they realize they're under the scrutiny, and, and they're now being positioned as yet another one of these Davos, G8, IMF, global conferences where people get together and they shouldn't be doing what they're doing behind closed doors. And thanks to the effort from you and other independent media now, we're finally getting somewhere with this, I think. It's incredible. I want to get into uh, the breaking news. I mean, I talked to... The well-known guy on Newsnight, uh, he's like one of the biggest TV personalities here in the country. I forget his name. What is it, Watson? John Sargent. John Sargent, you know, this famous guy. You, you know who he is. You've been on BBC as a host. And they told us, they said, no, Bilderberg's going to probably give us an interview. They're pretty freaked out by this. I went and met with him. He interviewed me. He goes, I'm going to have a special lunch now. And he got in his car and, from what I saw, drove in. I was like, oh, special lunch. This has never happened, and it's because first they wanted to be secret, so nobody talked about them. Now they realize being secret's blown up in their face. And again, there's other big top globalist meetings, but it's all about that key word when we come back from break, you're going to break down. You, you crystallize it. It's collusion. Why is Bilderberg dangerous? 
Well, that's, that's, that's the key word in my mind, is that you've got guys here organizing the scandals that we'll be reading about in five years' time. So, for example, this year, the big scandal with Apple and these other big companies not paying their taxes. Well, the system whereby they don't pay tax is worked out in meetings like this a few years ago. So they get together. It's very anti-competitive. They engage in collusion. They figure out how to bring in people like KMPG and the other big accountants and the money managers and the politicians to work out how to minimize their taxes and to dominate markets. And it's very anti-competitive. That's the problem with these organizations is that they're anti-free trade, anti-American. It's almost anti-capitalist. They just want to have price fixing, market manipulation, monopoly pricing, rent seeking, and they do it behind closed doors and they're colluding. That's the word, collusion. And that's what we should be against. And we're in the middle of, a, of a, probably one of the biggest lobbying scandals ever in UK history. There's the big secret lobby. They've been indicted before with Lockheed Martin for, for uh, you know, uh, aircraft deals, overcharging the people in the Netherlands with Prince Bernhard. So we have to send his, you know, his daughter, the queen now. Now the king reportedly is going to be here. We, we, uh, by the way, Leanne McAdoo got photos of the queen of the Netherlands driving in. Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller. I mean, they do not want this discussed. We're going to go to break in a minute. We're going to come back with one the only Max Kaiser into the next hour. And he's going to take some of your phone calls. We'll have to rig him up with a headset uh, to be able to do that. But uh, Max Kaiser uh, is right here with me. I want to talk about that lobbying. And I want to talk about how the mainstream media has screwed the pooch, as they say, uh, by 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 denying any of this exists for so long. And now they're playing catch up. So uh, where he sees all of this going as people discover that the terrible policies that these guys are carrying out are the ones destroying so much of our society. I'm Alex Jones with Max Kaiser at MaxKaiser.com. ProPure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Now, here's the problem. I get up here on air, and I have hundreds of great points I want to make as I'm driving over here or as I'm getting ready to go live on air. And then I go on air, and I don't cover it all. So Max is going to talk here for about 10 minutes because he's got plenty to say. He doesn't need to get ready. I'm going to write some notes of points I want to make that are important and, and all the groundbreaking stuff that's going on and, 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 and just the fact that I was told by two senator uh, aides and a major media mogul, I mean, I mean a guy worth – very close to a billion dollars. That old Peter Thiel's a good guy. He'd like to meet with you. And I just didn't follow up on it. I was just like, uh, no thanks. I probably should have said, yeah, get, put me on the airplane right now. Uh, but, um, you know, that, hey, Bilderberg and the new people don't like what's happening. and They want to fix things. Yeah, the globalists have stolen the whole world through fraud. Now they want to play nice. 
But the point is, is that I'd play nice if they would just stop Agenda 21, stop the shutdown of society. So I've got all these huge things I need to get to, and Max does as well, and I'm going to kind of collate those and cover them, and we're going to be taking your phone calls. Max is very gracious. He had international media. I'm not bragging. It's just showing that now we've gone from nobody at these things to, I'm not exaggerating, I was interviewed by Italian media, Russian, Al Jazeera, Press TV, five BBCs, six BBCs actually, then a bunch of others, so it's like 11 or 12 international outlets. It's already airing. I was at an interview for the Alex Jones show, the uh, top morning show with the attractive woman named Alex Jones. I'd say, hey, you can marry me, and then you won't have to change your, change your name. Of course, I love my wife. It's a joke. Honey, it's a joke. But that's why they actually wanted me on was to make that joke, so I learned that joke from them. But I want to get serious here with Max Kaiser. Max, Earlier, you were ranting as we were driving in the car incredibly eloquently about why Bilderberg is important, about what they're setting up, about what they're doing, about where this is going, and and the fact that their policies have put them in charge and everybody knows they did the robbing. So recap all those points you made and why you think this year is so important. Uh, Max Kaiser at MaxKaiser.com. Okay, Alex Jones. Well, as I was saying before the break, uh, leading up to this year, you know, Bilderberg had a bit of a negative connotations because it was almost synonymous with this idea of conspiracy therapy. Uh, uh, conspiracy uh, therapy. They can electroshock therapy us, and yeah. we love government. Exactly. So they just put the prods they put an in there, brain in set our it head. up to 800 megawatts. Therapy! Conspiracy therapy! So, uh... So it's a theory, and it's like synonymous with this idea. So, you know, talking about it, it almost puts you into a category instantaneously uh, of where there's a credibility issue. But because of guys like yourself and others, you know, you keep hammering and hammering and hammering. Now I think there's a breakthrough where you understand now that what's really Bilderberg is another one of these confabs where people get together and they plan uh, economic sabotage for themselves and economic manipulation, financial manipulation, et cetera. And they're doing this all on by themselves, for themselves. Uh, and now, as you point out, the global media is kind of focused on this. I myself, I will, I will admit this. I have not been Mr. Bilderberg following for, for, for the last few years. I've even covering Davos and stuff where they're doing the same thing. Yeah, I cover these things. I have. Uh, but now I think because you've made it such an item, it's hard to ignore it now. And then this is what you've been good at is putting the, the focus of indie media. That's on a question. Media owned and paid for by these people never wanted to cover it. What does it mean that they're all forced to cover it? Well, there's two. There's two. Uh, there's a double edged sword there. Number one, they're forced to cover it. That's great. Number two, uh, there is now an opportunity for them to try to use our media resources to spin it. You know, they'll come out with a press release and they'll say, well, what we're doing here is we're saving the world and we're doing good things. And they'll, they'll sound more like Davos, they'll sound more like the IMF and they'll come up. You know, remember 10 or 15 years ago, Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil you know, was being attacked by Greenpeace. And then within a few years, Exxon would use the images of Greenpeace to promote Exxon. So Exxon, Children's Charity yeah. brought you to right, by so Bilderberg. Exxon, you know, you see, uh, you see beautiful vistas and oceans and forests brought to you by Exxon, and they would just borrow all the imagery from Greenpeace and they use it to promote Exxon. So I think that you can see this with Bilderberg. Is that Exxon right? didn't bring me beautiful oceans? No. So now that Bilderberg's been exposed as part of this group of colluding monopolist oligarchs, they're going to have to come out with a more uh, nuanced PR spin, and they're going to have to try to promote themselves and do battle. So this is the information war. You have brought them to the battle. So now the battle begins. So you drew them out. Now you're in open battle, open field battle. So that, that's where we are this year. Yeah, people ask, why, why cover Bilderberg? Well, first we draw out the shadow government, and then now we've got to deal with their propaganda corps. You drew them out and, and done an excellent job well, doing we, it. I mean, we brought them out, all of us together. That, yeah, well, uh, but, sure. but, but, but getting into crony capitalism, if their own minutes have been leaked and come out. That's what they're doing. The easiest way to make money is just shut down your competition or get a government contract. And you've got government regulators meeting with the industries they're regulating. I mean, this is obviously illegal on so many fronts. I mean, how does this tie into the big lobbying scandal right now in the UK? Here's a good, you know, the, yeah, there's a huge lobbying scandal in the UK. But here's a here's a prime example. You've got the Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, George Osborne, who is launching something called Help to Buy, which is like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, if you remember that from America. 
they government subsidized housing and they created the subprime housing bubble, which burst and caused this huge financial crisis. And when the people can't pay it back, it doesn't matter because it's bailed out. They still lose their house, but the mega bankers get the money. Right. So now George Osborne wants to bring that to the UK. So they get the house and the money. So they take at a at a, at a group like this, like a Bilderberg, what they'll get, what they'll do, and what they probably did last year was they said, how can we reinflate the housing bubble and still keep the bondholders, which are the people in this room, whole? Here's an idea. We'll institute a government guarantee, help to buy scheme, model it on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, even though those programs have already been discredited, and we'll reinflate this bubble. We won't do anything about jobs. We won't do anything about competition. We won't do anything about anything to help the economy. We're just going to reinflate this bubble. We're going to launch that scheme, and now this is exactly what he's done. We broke it on our show. We said this is a Ponzi scheme. We got letters from George Osborne's office saying you can't call it a Ponzi scheme. We need to be more fair. But within two months, every media outlet in the U.K. is now calling it a Ponzi scheme. But gr uh, gatherings like Bilderberg is where they figure out how to put together these Ponzi schemes because you need the cooperation from KPMG, and Deloitte Touche, and the big global accounting firms. You need cooperation from global governments. You need cooperation from global market manipulators and bankers. So they go to their meetings. They come up with a scheme like that. They save their buddies in the bond market. They get the politicians to roll it out as an official policy. And now we're seeing the result of it. So that's just one example. And, of course, George Osborne's at Bilderberg this year. They're going to follow up on this scheme. It is hatched behind doors at one of these confabs. It's enormously destructive. And uh, who knows next year what they will have cooked up this year. We won't know the damage that they're doing today until next year when it's rolled out officially as government policy. And we see the damage that will cause next year and the year after that. And just adding to what you said, it's so frustrating when, when I was interviewed by six different BBC outlets and only a couple of them were halfway fair, they would say, so you say there's a meeting here, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're crazy. We got this on video. And I was like, no, there's a meeting. And she's like, no, there's not. And then later she goes, I was trying to provoke you. No, no, they were trying to like just play this game, insulting their viewers, but that doesn't work anymore. We've gotten the National Archives minutes. We've gotten it. And they are in there establishing the EU not to create freedom, but to implode national sovereignty, as the EU has now done, to, to sign the people of the EU, France, Germany, all of it, onto these trillions of debt that aren't theirs. It's the same thing in the U.S. It's the very same crew. And then I interviewed. We've got to upload this, by the way, Paul. I totally forgot. I've got the interview. Uh, it's on the white phone right here with uh, one of the UKIP uh, EU members of parliament. And he just, he was reminding me that it was a Nazi plan to create the European Economic Union uh, uh, under a free trade agreement to manage everyone economically. That was Hitler's plan. And then they basically adopted it, the British and the U.S. did, because they adopted everything else. Oh, run our rockets, run our CIA, run everything. It's not even so much Nazi as it's like, oh, we'll take that. That's a really great plan. We like your black uniforms. You're really evil. We're impressed with you. Will you tell us how to do everything? And Prince Bernhard, the Nazi, whose you know, daughter, the queen, is advocating over to the, the new king. She's here. Uh, Leanne McAdoo, our photographer, photographed it. She's up there uploading and running out of Twitter at Real Alex Jones and on the reporter Twitter. I mean, it's just the realization that creepy CIA, MI6, and Nazis set this up as a creepy combine uh, monopoly capitalist uh, organization and that they're doing all of this and that we've gotten all these minutes over the years that have leaked out in national archives that they are in there like LIBOR fixing the, the I mean, here's an example. Google now, oh, I wanted to ask you about this. Google, but I'll talk about the Nazi thing. Google. Okay. Googleberg is merging right now. We confirmed that for our inside source. Why well, they were so mad we were in the hotel. Googleberg? Well, yeah, when we sent people in, because we have sources inside that were at the meeting serving people last year, and then again a few weeks ago, Google meets there. Google planned the yeah. Arab Spring there. They, they bragged. Guys. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about it. But but I'm just telling the viewers so they know. We're not just saying this. That's why the security was had tears in their eyes when they caught us in there again, because they've all been threatened with being fired. We really got people in there serving and then once we said it, it was like, oh, my God, it's true. Then we actually found articles about it, pieces of it, confirming what our sources said. Then I talked to a high-level Senate source. They said, no, that's the plan. They believe in the technocracy, Max, of merging you know, this whole system. So the old men who are on average over 80 or 97 like David Rockefeller, they're passing the satanic baton 
and they're planning to merge this whole deal. But meanwhile, because they're desperate, they're like, how do we control the media while all this is going on? And then now uh, Bilderberg is metastasizing out. What is your take on all of that when they say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory when the international media interviewed me that, that, that these guys are important? Well, for the last 50, 60 years, there's been a tug of war between the creation of debt to fund growth and the subsequent downturns or recession that would occur every five or seven years to kind of purge the system of bad investments and, and uh, malinvestments. What happened in 2007, 2008 is the bad debts that have been accumulated for 50 years suddenly got so huge that understanding went out there in the global community that these debts would never be paid. And this is when the panic set in. So here we are five or six that are into this crisis. These economies are still shrinking. They're still contracting in Europe and in Greece and in, and in Cyprus and all in France now just announced unemployment numbers that are quite high. These economies are still shrinking in, in ways that we haven't seen in the post-World War II era. This is the longest running economic contraction we've seen. So all the tricks that these guys have used in the past to inflate debt, to uh, do whatever they can do to get some GDP growth have failed. And that's why this is becoming more urgent. And that's why a Bilderberg group, they hope to come out of here with some new you know, plan to create some kind of growth somewhere, but it's just not materializing. So the, it brings because it because they've the, already created a monopoly. They'll only allow growth that makes them fatter. There's just too much debt. Yeah. So this old skeletons in the closet, like the Nazis, you know, they're back. And then what's happening in France? There was a skinhead attack of a left winger, and he, he's now brain dead. There, there's a neo-Nazi party in Greece. You know, the Nazis are back in Europe because the like Ghostbusters. You know, you know, if you don't keep them at bay, they will find their way back into the well, mainstream. Well, was brought in by a bad economy. So, well, you know, I made the point on my uh, blog recently that the Versailles Agreement after World War One that put these onerous conditions on Germany, which led to the rise of a, a psycho, a madman. Now, the onerous conditions after the 2008 break, the debt that's been put into place around the world that people have to suffer, what they call austerity, is now having a global reaction. You know, I call it the global insurrection against banker occupation. There's a global reaction now to these debts that were unfairly imposed. You can go back to Versailles and you see how similarly the, the many were asked to suffer the consequences of the mistakes of the few. We had a few bankers create enormous mistakes in the, the years, the uh, 2000 period, the dot-com boost, and then the subprime collapse, and they've been asking the global population to pay for those mistakes. And after five or six years now, since it hasn't worked, we have the emergence of radical extremist right-wing groups like neo-Nazis are now back in the picture. So this is history repeating itself in a lot of ways. And then they'll also fund fake left-wing groups to give a communist answer to the crisis, and the media will give it attention instead of just getting back to common sense, real free market. That's what's so frustrating. They're scapegoating free market for what the mega banks have done when they're the opposite of a free market. They have protected, guaranteed markets with my money. You know, the old saying of uh, risk is made public, but the profits, uh, you know, are made private. Yeah, well, as you know, it's not about the collapse or the failure of free markets. We don't have free markets. We have markets that have been uh, co-opted by a f a certain groups that have been able to change the way markets operate entirely. Flash trading. Well, you've got the flash crashes, and what that all is about is that this whole idea that a market should be equally balanced between risk and reward has been destroyed using derivatives, which lead to things like flash trading. So that risk is now concentrated in the population, in the many. The rewards are taken or skimmed off. Because by if we top. have to bail out their mistakes, why shouldn't they make a mistake and then we get Listen, bailed yeah. out? We bail them out, but now we're bailed out. It's moral and now, hazard. now it's our debt. They call it moral hazard. In yeah. other words, they keep bailing out the bad guys and they keep doing bad things. But I'll give you a good example. Here's the stock market at 15,000 or so in the Dow Jones. It's going to crash uh, at some point probably in the near future. The, those who understand how the derivative markets work, they already have their insurance on. They've spent 1% or 2% buying a, a put or a contract that gives them the ability not to suffer any losses once the market crashes. But the vast majority of people out there are completely unhedged. They're completely exposed to this market. So when there is this crash that's going to come, there'll be another 10 to $15 trillion of equity wiped out amongst the vast majority of people out there that got sucked in at the top. But this, those people who orchestrated this maneuver, they're completely protected. They have no risk, no skin in the game whatsoever. For 1% or 2% of the value 
you have at risk. You can buy an insurance product in the form of a put and, and insulate yourself entirely against any losses. And that's this asymmetric warfare that goes on between people who have. Absolutely. We're going to go to break. We're going to go to break. Come back and explain that more. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Resources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will mail you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at InfoWars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals. Going down, going down now. We got to get Max Kaiser hooked up soon with some audio in the next segment to be able to take calls. We go into the next hour. I haven't even gotten into the international news in context of this, but we're just discussing the fact that there is the fact that there's shadowy groups that want to influence policy and who want to take over government to get a hold of your tax money and banker bailouts and corporate welfare. And they're like, oh, that doesn't exist. Ha ha, conspiracy. Everybody knows there's no powerful interest meeting. Sure, we charge thousands a year per county and everywhere in the U.S. or in England with conspiracy. Two people decide to rob a liquor store. It's a conspiracy. But powerful people never conspire. I mean, I mean, oh, but Max agrees. It's outrageous. He agrees. But uh, Stacey Herbert, uh, one of the producers and host of uh, Max Kaiser's uh, many uh, shows here, uh, she was reading me a great Adam Smith quote, the famous uh, Wealth of Nations uh, economist. And I guess that was in Chapter 4, uh, page 145, paragraph C27, an incredible quote about conspiracies. But we all know Adam Smith was nobody. I mean, this is a lie. This is, this is a conspiracy theory exactly you know and what a lot of times when these people gather outside the likes of Bilderberg or G8 the BBC News and mainstream media will call them anti-capitalist so it's important to listen carefully to what Adam Smith in the wealth of nations 
no other book is more important to the ideals of capitalism than the wealth of nations. And he said, people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment and diversion, but the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. And that is often quoted frequently. I've heard that a few times. But nobody continues with the rest of it in light of what the governments are doing to enable this. He then said, but though the law cannot hinder people of the same trade from sometimes assembling together, it ought to do nothing to facilitate such assemblies, oh. much less to render them necessary. Which the police are ass backwards guarding them right now doing the opposite of that common sense. Well, and George Osborne and his labor shadow, Ed Balls, are attending. Why are they attending? They don't need to attend. They shouldn't and be. And haven't they had the attorney general there too? I'm not sure about that. I mean, I mean, th th this is outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's outrageous that George Osborne should be at the moment, especially the fact that Amazon, Jeff Bezos, these people are currently in a very big brouhaha here about avoiding taxes. Well, not paying While any taxes. While lobbying to raise middle class taxes to bail out banks. See, exactly. It's not enough that they're trying to get out of taxes. They, they want me to fit the bill for all them. Yes. Well, this is the, the problem. You know, George Osborne has these austerity measures across the UK. And as we see, they're preparing for the G8. You know, they've created a Potemkin village to make it look like austerity is working as they're raising taxes on everybody here. Taxes. Yeah, it, that whole thing up there in Ireland. The, the in Farmana, where they're outside of Belfast, where they're having the G8 conference, that there's just devastation, right? The shops are all closed down. The butcher shops is dilapidated. The, the local shops are all dilapidated. So what they've done is they put posters up. To make it look, to make it look it like it's a literal wallpaper facade. That's like when the Queen of England goes to Africa; they'll have a soundstage with a fake village. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. this is unbelievable. Yeah. Right. That's not what they're doing now in Ireland to make it look like the economy. And then if you say that's paper wallpaper of a happy shop, you're the conspiracy theorist. Right. Yeah. Well, Neo is a conspiracy theorist. But that, but that's George good, Washington. But is. that's a good point: is that the cops here should not be protecting these people gathering because, as Adam Smith said, they have a propensity to fix prices. They should not. Well, exactly. Money. Instead of making good products to win, it's easier to just buy off the government, shut everybody down. We're going to go to break here, Stacy. Great points. You want to stay with us? Uh, I'll, I'll chip in when when necessary. <laughs> Well, it's great having you guys from MaxKaiser.com, Stacey Herbert, and, of course, Max Herbert uh, here with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live with Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert. I'm your host, Alex Jones. I want to hear from UK callers, uh, their take on taxpayers having to pay for these globalists to meet here. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. And sometimes people can't call from England on that. I forget the uh, specific number we're supposed to give out with a certain prefix. Uh, so that people are able to call. Maybe maybe the network can text that to you, Richard, because I forgot sometimes people can't call that 800 number uh, if they're uh, in England. It's always good to remember that. 800-259-9231. Uh, but coming up, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Uh, again, Max Kaiser is my guest. That was an amazing Adam Smith quote. Uh, was from Stacy. From Stacy. Yeah, Stacy uh, made an excellent point there, as she always does, on our show. And... 
But, uh, you know, if you want to follow up on that, I mean, the cops should not allow this gathering because we know that there'll be price collusion going on and price fixing, and that should be discouraged. These guys should be separated and forced to compete with each other, not collude with each other. But according to them, they're not doing any of that. I mean, even though we have all the documents. But Yeah, exactly. But uh, we've known for 200 years now since the publication of uh, Wealth of Nations and Adam Smith that this is the propensity of businessmen to do this. But this is hard-coded into the DNA of free market capitalism for 230 years or so that we know this is what's going to happen. So the people running our governments like the Obama or the David Cameron, they should be out front and making sure these things don't happen. These people don't get together. They, that they should be forced to compete to make money instead of collude to make money. You're absolutely right. I want to come back and just open the phones up total to anybody that has a view on Bilderberg or where this is going at 800. Uh, at 800-259-9031, again, 800-259-9231, uh, and we'll get you uh, up and on the air. And I'll, I'll guarantee you the phone system is down uh, w with uh, GCN, or I would be even seeing that those phones were all ringing right there. I see this occasionally, and then we figure out the phone system uh, is down, but we'll get that phone system rebooted, 800-259-9231. Uh, I see that number so often, I, I just kind of mill it all together now, 800-259-9231. And if you're in the UK, the number to call in is one six five one six nine five seven seven five five. 651 Your country code, and then uh, 651 695 We'll get you up and on the air. Max, I want to go over some of the news in the economy, the scandals in Obama first, then we're going to those phone calls uh, with you here. But as we go to break here, how do you think Bilderberg is going to deal and in other shadow government meetings now that they're being identified that there are special interests pulling the strings oh my gosh what an epiphany but that is an epiphany for the naive public that really thought the government loved them and was going to take good care of them i think they're going to roll out the public relations offensive so we're going to start Bilderberg is going to start branding itself, and we're going to start seeing ads for Bilderberg, the group that is doing good things for you. And this is one magical way that modern consumer culture has evolved in that the people doing the worst things are able to roll out the most egregious propaganda ads to support what they're doing. So now that they've been identified as being part of the bad guys, the Monsanto, the Exxons, the Microsofts, you know, they're part of the bad guys. So now they're going to have to come out with a lot of uh, advertising and PR spin to somehow uh, spin and promote themselves as the good guys. And since they own a monopoly position, position in the media outlets, they have, we're going to have an excellent uh, chance of doing so. But that's where indie media and Infowars, you know, is, is going to be in an open war now. It, the, the war is now the, gone to the open field. And uh, so that's a good for, for indie media because it was hard to fight them when they were hiding in the, in the shadows as they have been. But now that they're out in the open, I think it's gonna be easier to fight them. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an eye beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. contain myself. Steve Watson just arrived at the London or the Watford train station. They're at the Watford Junction right now and there's government ministers, Balls and others, uh, are there right now and Steve Watson. Have Steve go in and get video interviews on the damn on the train. Go in, engage, engage. That's what I kept telling all the demonstrators and protesters. It isn't even important to sit out there in the sun with me all day and Max Kaiser tomorrow and Saturday and everything. That's important, but not as important as just being on the train, being in a restaurant. Uh, if you're a local hooker, they're probably going to be visiting you. I mean, you never know where these scum are going to pop up. And Steve Watson, who was coming, who was with us yesterday reporting for Infowars.com, Paul's great brother with his political science degree, really helps out in his research. He was here with his uh, fiance or girlfriend helping us do reporting. 
and then he went back to London where he lives. Well, now he's back and he's on the train with a whole bunch of Bilderberg people mm -hmm. coming in, boom, landing in their jets and just hiding under the radar, coming right in here. So that's some of the breaking news. We have calls from England, from Kathleen and others. As soon as you hear calls hung up on, that's your chance to call in 800-259-9231. If you're calling in from England, unfortunately, 800 numbers don't work for some people. So uh, your country code, I guess, 011 and then 651-695-7755. Uh, but we're just here identifying the lobbyist. I mean, that really, Max, you're right, it's collusion. It comes down to the fact that we're just identifying. Look at Lindsey Graham. Is it sure if bloggers deserve First Amendment protection? And they're going on like England's calling for, the UK, to say, you have to be licensed to be media now or we'll demand all your sources or we'll shut you down. That's like fairness doctrine because they can't win a debate with us. Uh, and we have separately, uh, on top of this, got all these other just bizarre headlines where we'll take your DNA in the U.S. without warrant. So we'll, it's a unified agenda. New York Senate passes bill that would make it, uh, that would make annoying a cop a felony. Adon Salazar, Infowars.com, New York Senate Bill 2402, just so they don't like how you look. I saw Florida arrest because uh, the uh, the person gave a hateful look. So now, I mean, that's like going back to feudalism where you looked at the king or the lord wrong, Max. And so you're going to be disappeared now. Uh, this is just incredible. Max Kaiser, and then your phone calls. No, yeah, it is like feudalism where you know, if you're a friend of the people in the court, uh, you have uh, a shot at being part of the establishment, the elite. It, everyone else is, uh, has to be constantly on guard. It's a complete repudiation of everything that we learned during the Enlightenment. Adam Smith, we just talked about it. It's a repudiation of the free market capitalism. It's a repudiation of the Enlightenment. We're going back to medievalism. But you can't argue gave us all this wealth. Tyranny and big government did not give us this. Well, I mean, this is what I have a slight problem in the United States anyway with the encroachment of, let's say, um, religious fundamentalism to some degree because some of these guys like Lindsey Graham and others are going to start claiming that they have the divine rights. Well, he just uses that as a front. They use the Christians. Yeah, well, they're using the Christians in a way that will end up they'll be starting to claim that they, have, they are operating under the divine right of kings and that they have the divine right to put people in jail because they were looked at funny. And this is what we're seeing happening in real time. It's it's quite uh, quite alarming at the speed at which the U.S. is sinking into a hellhole, really, of a com of a complete rightless. By the way, you're always state. saying that, and I've got to say, I've seen some police state here, but most of the cops either say all I care about is rugby, or they say I'm a listener. And I've, I'm really ashamed to say this because I say America's waking up, and it is to a great extent. I have been in England, and it is awake. I mean, I cannot walk down the street without having twice the attention I get in the United States, which, which again, I see as a radar or sonar ping. Man, let me tell you, you're right, Max. Well, you're, but how can Europe be under such deep tyranny? Is that why they're more awake? Let's talk about the UK for a second, because in the UK, unlike the US, you have actually a left-wing press. There is a left in the UK. You have people who are in the Communist Party, and they have seats in Parliament, and there's a left-wing press. And you have real debate. Uh, between what is identified as right-wing issues. You have real libertarians like UKIP. They're good guys. UKIP is challenging the people on the right, and you've got uh, people, of course, uh, who are identified with the left, but you end up with a lot more debate in terms of uh, political agenda, which people are discussing, and it filters down to the man on the street and the rank and file in the police department who are a lot more aware of some of these political debates going on. Whereas in the U.S., you've got the far right and the near right they don't even have a center. It's all right wing in the United States. There's no, there's no left at all. There's no liberal media at all. Now, see, I would agree. I'd say it's all establishment. You got a fake left and a fake right. You would see liberal as like Thomas Jefferson liberal. But when Americans hear you say liberal, they're thinking the Maoist, you know, at the Justice Department. Well, yeah, because of the propaganda put out by people like Bilderberg, who like to keep people extremely focused on enemies that don't exist on uh, shying away from true media debate. So your perception of there being more, let's say, conversations with people who are in the blue collar world, like cops and nurses and things like that is because they have a much more dynamic functioning media 
here in the UK. I mean, I'm curious to hear what. There's Watson, no doubt. There's more choices. What, what Watson's opinion is of this. You know, he's a native uh, British uh, guy, and Redco, you know, he, he, he might have a different opinion. But my my what thought is compared to the states, you you do have some more dynamism. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being hoodwinked, and that's not true. I'm curious what Watson has to say. Really. That's a, that's an important video. You you are curious. I would like to know. All right, Supreme Red Cup. What was the point again? The point is that the thought is. I was just saying that he meets people on the street and they seem a lot more politically awake and aware. And I was saying, well, one of the reasons is that there's a more dynamic media here in the UK. There is a left, there is a right, there is more there is more debate at least. Doesn't mean people but there are also cops that go, all I care about is rugby. It doesn't mean there's a lot more they're not enjoying greater rights necessarily, but at least there's a lot more debate given the diversity in media that or I Or is it because they've been screwed harder? Your thoughts, they're a few years ahead of it. I think it's in America there's a very America is isolated. A lot of Americans haven't even left America. They don't have passports. Whereas they think it's a conspiracy theory that Europe even exists, literally. Oh, yeah, whereas in they Britain... Think, no, they think like in the U.S. ends, it falls off the earth. Like yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly it. But in Britain, it's a tiny country. We're out looking at Europe. We're looking out. We're not looking inwards. A lot of Americans are looking inwards because they're not aware of anything that's happening in Europe. They don't leave the country very often. And you're right, there is more of a left-wing element in Britain compared to America, where a lot of it is centered around the Occupy movement, which was very easily infiltrated and steered off to something else. So, yeah, there's more diversity in terms of media and opinions. And you were saying yesterday, Alex, that you, you got the sense that people were more awake here. They'd heard of Bilderberg, but they may not have necessarily heard of you. Oh, yeah, a lot of them didn't even know about it. Were telling me about the New World Order. <laughs> yeah, and they were going, oh, yeah, who are you, by the way? So even without your massive impact, people are waking up, which is good because, you know, it's, it's a diverse thing. But yeah, I agree with Max. There's there's more kind of left wing press. But they're like awake. It. But their solutions are big government because they yeah. see it going and stopping the big bankers. But the big bankers run big government. Yeah. So yeah. how do you have? Yeah, 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 yeah. On the left, is that their solution is typically to enhance government or to streamline government? Or there's a government or a solution, which I, I disagree with. But I think it's important to have that conversation because clearly government. Well, there's like real leftist here. They're not like authoritarian gang like Obama. Well, they would have a role in as we were saying before in regulating markets. This is where I disagree with people like Lou Rockwell, for example who is a libertarian to the point of what he calls anarcho-capitalism, which is, he believes, markets are self-correcting and they're never wrong. I disagree in that markets must have some fundamental rudimentary regulation. It's like football has regulation. to have rules or, or, or they will game them. Right. They're going to make the rules, which is they're going to screw you. The problem with the markets today is that they the rules are, are, are don't exist or they're not being enforced. And so we're not, people are vilifying capitalism. And then to get to hey, your hey, point, hey, wait, hey, let, let me, let, whoa, 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 let me get to your point. Let is them, that there's don't that bail left. Them out. Let them do what they want, but don't bail them out. There's that. My but, issue is don't let them have total freedom, but then they go to jail when they rip people. But let me let me say this: the result of mob, the rise of the mob due to the collapse of fake capitalism, is identified as a left-wing reaction. But I would disagree with that. It's also, not it's not. It, it is a you could call it a populist reaction or a, a chaotic re reaction. But you can't put a political label on it. But the right would say, look, there are the lefties and they're the mob and they're fighting us. And that's we, that's where see that's where Bilderberg will come out of this with their rebranding that you will be positioned as a left wing. A uh, mob, a uh, populist. No, no, no. That's how well, they'll all the papers it. walking by newsstands. It's right. like communist to protest capitalist meeting. But but then, when these are insiders, the opposite of a free market. But if you go to Infowars.com and you're selling pure water filters, I mean, you're not selling you know uh, left wing agenda. You are a businessman. You have a media outlet. You are part of a an economy that values hard work. Oh yeah, leftists I know think it's bad to even sell a product. Let me make this point here because we're going to break. Max, we're going to come back with calls. This is really important. They try to scramble all the terms, I think is what we're getting to here. And here's Bilderberg that uses government to control its wealth and take over others. And then they call their opposition communist, which it's the opposite. I didn't really run into any communist out there today. I mean, it's my point. They're populist that don't want to be cheated. So uh, that's what it comes down there, to. There are there are hardcore left wingers like Tony Benn, for example. You know, he's a famous left winger. It's when when the left, the Labour government was in power. You know, they have people who are titans, uh, big wigs, big names in the left wing, uh, and and it, they got blown away by Tony Blair, who came in as new Labour. But as Margaret Thatcher said, 
you know, as she was about to retire. And one of her greatest achievements in life, when asked, what is your greatest achievement? She said, well, one of the greatest achievements was new labor. In other words, new labor became the right wing establishment. And, and that killed labor. That killed the left wing politics in this country. So you had new labor under Tony Blair, which was really just Thatcherism light. And then you had Thatcherism. And there hasn't really been anything since then. Yeah, but it's all globalism because the, uh, they've done that to the right wing. Again, all these terms mean nothing. Uh, you know, the bottom line is we shouldn't bail out mega rich bankers with our tax money while they lecture us all day that it's wrong to make $125,000 a year. But you're saying that as a businessman, and yet the establishment will say you're saying that as a communist. I know, but I'm saying it as somebody that wants to run my own life and not be fed on that's, that's by a bunch of fat cat pigs. We'll be right back with your phone calls. And Max Kaiser, I'm Alex Jones. We're live from north of London, Bilderberg, 2013. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>